so that it, it can be easily translated into other languages. Actually, it's a way of coding in which the strings in, in your uh, theme or plugin can be translated later without modifying the source code. That's the goal of internationalization. And localization is the subsequent process of tra uh, translating the internationalized code. Uh, usually, internationalization is denoted as I18, and that means there are 18 letters between I and L. And localization is denoted as L10, that means there are 10 letters between L and L. Mm. So why you should care about internalization? This is a this chart is taken from the uh, website a few days back. So in this you can see that uh, only uh, this is uh, this chart shows the total number of WordPress installations in the world according to locales. So here you can see that only 45.7 percentage of the WordPress installations are in English language. That means US English. Uh, so, more than half of the installations are in a language other than English. So, that means you should always write translatable code if you want to reach your plugin or theme to a wider audience or a larger culture. So, that's the reason we should do internalization. So, we can now move to coding. First thing that you need to do is, uh, normally when you develop a theme or plugin in WordPress, you should write like, uh, write some header lines like uh, plugin name, author name, theme name, etc. So in addition to these lines, you need, you need to add two more lines. That is the text domain and the domain path. Uh, text domain is actually a unique value assigned to each of your strings. And domain path is, a, is the path where your translations are saved. Uh, also, if you are planning to submit your plugin uh, to the WordPress repository, uh, the plugin slug should match the text domain. Uh, plugin slug is the uh, unique part of your uh, URL that you get once your plugin gets approved in the WordPress repository. In this example, you, uh, you can see that my the last URL, my plugin is the slug of th this plugin. So the text domain should also be the same. Uh, next thing we need to do is we need to load the translation. We need to write a function to load our translation translations on loading the plugin. So you can use the load plugin text domain function in WordPress, uh, and you need to pass the text domain, uh, uh, text domain as the first argument, and the uh, languages folder as the la last argument. So when the, um, this languages folder contains all uh, contains all the translations of your plugin. So when whenever your plugin is loaded, uh, all the translations will be loaded from this language folder based on the text domain. Similarly, in the case of themes, you need to call the li uh, load theme text domain function, and it works the same as the plugin. Next thing is WordPress uses the get text libraries and tools for internalization. Uh, it's actually a tool used widely in the open source world. Um, and it's used by a lot of applications in the world for <coughs> internalization. Uh, we can see some string functions. Uh, the, this is an example of a get text function. All the get text functions start with an underscore. Here you can see that the first function start, starts with two underscore. And, and the function contains two arguments. Actually, th uh, this means that the first one, first argument is the string that needs to be translated, and the sec second one is the text domain. Uh, is a text domain. This actually this means that the first, the string in the first argument belongs to the text domain, which is the second argument. Um, normally, if we want to print something in PHP, we would we would uh, write li uh, something like echo the string. But if we write like this, it cannot be translated. <laughs> In order to translate this, we need to convert it into a get text function. Uh, you can see the converted function below, echo and the function, uh, and the string. So here, uh, what happens exactly is, uh, if a translation is found for the, stri for the string in the first argument, then it will, it will echo the translation. If no translations are found, then it will echo the same string. It will output, output the same string. Also, there is a shortcut for the echo function in uh, in get text, it's underscore e. So normally we use the underscore e function instead of the echo function to print strings. And next thing you need to uh, you need to note note is you should never use um, variables in uh, text domain and strings because uh, uh, get text cannot uh, execute or take the get uh, get text cannot get the value of the variable. So um, you should always use plain text only in the text domain. But in the case of string path, the, the second example, uh, sometimes we need to output strings like that. So in that case, uh, sorry, sometimes we need to use variables. So in that case, you can use the printf function or the sprintf function in PHP. 
next is another function underscore n. It's actually used to uh, display uh, strings uh, based on plural or singular. Uh, the underscore, the first argument of the underscore n function is the singular, singular uh, text and the second argument is the plural text. So based on the value of the count, it will display either the singular or plural value. Another example of uh, getx function is the underscore s, x function. It's actually used to display content based on the context. So the noun and verb of, of a word may be the same in English, but in a different language, it will it, will, it may not be the same. So in that kind of cases, you can use the underscore x function. Also, as you know, in WordPress, we have an SK function for escaping malformed HTML or script or prevent uh, excess, um, CSS injection and all. So the SK function in WordPress can be combined with all the getx functions. You should always use the SK function with the getx function. Then your code will be more secure. So I have only explained a few of the getx functions. There are lots of functions. You can get a complete list of getx func uh, functions from the WordPress codex. So as you have a basic idea of how to write translatable code, we can now move to localization. It's the part where it actually gets translated. So normally there are two kinds of plugins, as you know. Uh, the plugins that we create for our personal use or the plugins that we cre create for our clients, these are all private plugins. Also, there are plugins that we submit to the WordPress repository. It's actually a uh, public plugin. So the localization <coughs> steps for these two plugins are different. So first, we will look at how to localize a private plugin. So first, you need to understand three basic files, port file, PO file, and MO file. You can look into details of these files. Uh, the port file actually contains all the strings in your plugin or theme. Uh, this is usually generated uh, using i18 tools. There are lots of i18 tools available. Uh, the most common one is the makeport uh, tool. It's a command line utility. You, uh, using it, you can generate port file. Also, there, there is a tool called PO editor. There are lots of other tools to generate this file. Actually, what these tools do is, these tools will scan your entire theme or plugin directory and will extract all the uh, uh, strings in the getx functions. So it will get all the, uh, it will get all the strings in your code. This is a sample port file. Here we can see uh, strings, uh, sorry, file names and the strings inside that file. So once you generate a port file, you can share it with the translator. And the translator can enter these translations and save it as a PO file. So for each file, there needs to be a separate PO file. <laughs> Um, uh, also, uh, the PO file should be named using the correct locale. Locale means the uh, area code and language co It's a, com a combined code of area and language. For example, ENUS is the um, locale for US English, American English. Uh, EN underscore GB is the locale for British English. So also, uh, the uh, MO file should be named in the format plugin slug hyphen lo language locale. Here plugin, uh, in the example, plugin is the slug and the end use is the locale. Uh, this is a sample PO file for the Malayalam language. Here you can see that the port file and PO file are exactly the same. The only difference is this file contains the translations. Uh, next is the MO file. So for, uh, for this is the actual file that the system reads to get your translations. So, for, uh, we need to convert every PO file to an MO file. Uh, the port file and PO file are used by developers and translators, but the, but the only file used by the system is the MO file. This file can be uh, generated using a tool called MSG FMT. It's a command line utility available for both Linux and Windows. Uh, and uh, once this file is generated, you can place it in the themes or plugins language folder, which is the folder I have explained in the first slide. So when the plugin is loaded, it will load all the translations from this file. Also, there are many tools available to generate all these three files. The most common one is the PO edit. It's, a, uh, it's available in a uh, free version and a paid version. Uh, using this PO edit, you can generate uh, port file, PO file, MO file, all the files can be generated. And we can also use WordPress plugins to generate uh, these files, like the most common ones are the local translate, WPML string translations, and there are lots of other plugins. So uh, the advantage of using the plugins is that not only you can generate these um, PO and MO files, but you can also uh, 
do all the translations from the WordPress dashboard itself. So if you create an account for your translator, he can log into your WordPress website and do the translations from the WordPress dashboard itself. That's the advantage of using plugins. So uh, that is how you localize a private plugin. In the case of a public plugin, actually you don't need to do much. Uh, you just uh, confirm that everything is coded correct. Uh, like the text domain is defined in the header as I have explained in the first step and the load text domain is uh, called correctly. If everything is correct, you can submit it to WordPress and once it is approved, people from all over the world will translate and you can sit back and relax. So actually this is done by translation contributors. So we can have a look at how this translation contributors work. Actually the translation contributors in WordPress is called Polyglots team. They are responsible for ensuring WordPress is available in dozens of languages and many more regions. Also, uh, they, uh, the role of them is to release quality and consistent translations. Currently WordPress is available in more than 200 locales. Actually, anyone can become a translation contributor. If you know more than one language, you can also become a translation contributor. You just need to sign up at WordPress, you just need to create an account at wordpress.org and you can log into translate.wordpress.org. Once you log in, uh, you will get a screen like this. Actually, when you take the site itself, you will get a screen like this. Here, all the available locales, that is, uh, the locales in which WordPress is available will be displayed. From this, you can choose one locale and start contributing to the translations. Or you can search in the uh, search field and do the... Um, so once, uh, once you select a, a, a locale from this module, you will get a screen like this. Here, I, I have selected Malayalam locale. Uh, the official code for Malayalam locale is ML underscore IS. Um, once you uh, select a locale, you will get all the projects inside that locale. For example, here you can see WordPress themes, plugins, etc. WordPress means the WordPress core CMS. So here WordPress is selected, so it will display all the versions of WordPress. So from this, you can select a version and, do the, and start contributing to, the, to that. And also there are themes and plugins. If you click on themes, you will get uh, access to all the themes in the WordPress repository and you can start contributing, uh, start select one, you can select one of them and start contributing to that. Similar is the case with plugins. You should note that there are uh, more than 54,000 plugins in the WordPress repository and uh, I think more than 31,000 themes are available in the WordPress repository. Uh, this is the screen that you get once you, se once you have selected a module to translate. Here I have selected a module of the uh, WordPress core 5.0 version. So once you select a module, you can see that the total number of strings and the untranslated number of strings and the strings that are waiting for approval. Uh, here you can see that uh, um, actually there are two columns. Uh, the first column contains the strings uh, from the source code, uh, strings extracted from the source code. And the second column contains the translations contributed by users. So uh, you can see that one of the editor tips, one of the uh, text is not translated. Uh, you can just double click there and uh, Textedia will open and you can enter your translations. Once you have entered a translation, you have also become a translation contributor. So, um, all the translations need to be approved by PTE. PTE means Project Translation Editor. For each plugin or team, uh, plugin or team there will be a PTE team. So, one of the team members should approve your translations. Also, there is a team called GT, that means Global Translation Editors. They can also approve your uh, global, uh, global translation editors are actually uh, responsible for the for a complete module, uh, sorry, complete locale. So they can also approve your translations. Both GT team and PT team can approve your translations. So once the translations are approved, it will be added added to the uh, corresponding module. That's how it works.